the Mountain West Mountain Division. And we actually really enjoyed this division last year. Before we start off, we're going to we're gonna roll with the Utah State Aggies because they won the division and the conference last year. Uh, you got any initial impressions of the conference overall? Uh, conference overall or division overall? Uh, the division overall. Time, division okay, overall. Okay, because last time I gave a conference overall impression and we we're talking only division. That's uh, true, yeah. <laughs> this division, I... There, there are some teams that I think are going in the right direction, and I like the coaches. And there are teams that I think are going in the wrong direction and or just not doing anything that moves the needle. Whether they're going in a direction or not, it's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. There are the haves and the have-nots. Um, you know, well, you know what, let's just let's jump into it, and we will talk about each one as we go along. Uh, we'll start off here with the Utah State Aggies. And Utah State, of course, Blake Anderson's team, uh, hell of a year last year in his first season, yep. went eleven and three, went six and two in the conference, um, won the Mountain West. I mean, just destroyed yes. San Diego State in the conference title game. Uh, their post game win expectancy. This is a new one I'm going to bring up on each of these teams that kind of gives you an idea of how deserving the teams were, et cetera, of those wins. Uh, eight point two eight and four point seven two. So. The post game win expectancy for them last year says that they really should have been about an eight and five team, uh, but they went eleven and three, and they they certainly improved towards the end of the year. The first like five games of the season, uh, it, or seven games, I guess they opened up five and two, but they got three wins like just by the the skin of their teeth. I mean, it was really really close. Probably shouldn't have beaten Air Force. Probably shouldn't have beaten Colorado State. I mean, it was stuff at the end of the game that really came down to it, and the stats just didn't look right. They they got a lot of lucky bounces last year. But they ended up really improving throughout the season, and you could see it. They destroyed San Diego State in that Mountain West title game, and then they beat Oregon State in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. So this was a good team last year. This is going to be a fun season to see exactly what Blake Anderson has there. Uh, we'll start off with the offense. Bonner completed 61.3% of his passes. The offense was number 25 in third down conversions. They were number one in the country in 30-plus yard plays. So they were, uh, I'm not going to say boom or bust, but they certainly took a lot of chances, and they capitalized on them. Uh, they were returning five offensive linemen that have 500-plus snaps. The question here is, can those offensive linemen get any kind of a push to help the rushing success rate with returning starting running back Tyler? Um, Calvin Tyler is the running back, by the way. Uh, they were number 124 in the country. Every other offensive statistic that you could find was really, really good. Their rushing success rate was number six from the bottom last year. So if they can get any kind of consistency there, it's certainly going to help them out when they play. Hang on now. Go ahead. Hang on. Go ahead. That's, that's Mike Anderson's offense. Hey, it is boomer bust. He takes yeah. the top off the defense, and if you miss and if your defensive back doesn't make the right play, he is going to score. Okay. True. And when he does that, that means he scores fast and they're not running the damn football. Like this is the way that they play offense. Like if they ran the ball really well, then this wouldn't be a Blake Anderson offense. Uh, okay, you do have a value. So they're not there. gonna they're not gonna get better at running the football because they don't do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's uh let's talk about the defense. If you without looking at numbers last year, uh, would you have considered their defense pretty good? Uh, I would have said at the beginning of the year, no, and I think they got considerably better at the end of the year, but I don't know any metrics. I'm just gauging on, like you, Blake Anderson, watching this team more than most Mountain West teams. They were not very good at uh, passing success rate, but they were pretty good at rushing success rate. They were number 42 in the country in defensive PPA per drive. That's defensive uh, predicted points added per drive, which is really good. For a Mountain West that's real, team. That's, that's really good for a, yes. for a Mountain West team, yeah. So they, Especially they a team the size of Utah State. No, you got that right. They uh, they lost some studs, but they did bring in some really talented transfers uh, that could end up making the unit even better in 2022. Defense was number 31 in Havoc rate last year, number 10 in stuff rate. So that defensive line was serious. Uh, you got to wonder, can they continue that trajectory without their defensive end, Henninger, and the linebacker, Rice? Uh, their defensive end... Uh, Byron Vaughns is he is the key here. Like I think he's going to be insanely disruptive. He had a 
a personal havoc rate of like 5%, which is kind of absurd. Like he's he's unbelievable. So I would I would imagine this team could be really really good. Uh they do have a linebacker back AJ and I'm not even going to try and say his last name. Uh, but his numbers were great last year. So they, they got some good dudes coming in that I think are going to be awesome here. Um, big losses, though. Their top three wide receivers are gone. Um, and, you know, you lose that the defensive end and the linebacker. They lose uh, the safety, Shaq Bond. They lose their tight end, Carson Terrell. Um, keys to the season here, I've got, can the team go 4-0 in one-score games again? Now, it, the postgame win expected, no. they suggested three fewer wins. But obviously they played better at the yeah. end. Um, I don't think you can do four and zero and one score games again. Uh, they'll yeah, need to reestablish those playmakers. Like I said, they lost their top three wide receivers, but they did bring in Cobb's a wide receiver from Maryland and uh, Xavier Williams from Alabama, and those guys could pop. They are really really talented guys. I've got this team sitting at like eight and four this year, and I think it would be really good. Man, uh, you know. To, to keep them around that. That's eight exactly what I've got. Eight and four. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Uh, eight and four. Like I, I had a feeling you would you would think highly of this team as well. But you know when you look at the schedule, they play at Boise, they play at Alabama. Uh, I've got them losing at BYU, and then I've got them losing at home to Air Force. At, you know I I think they could probably beat Air Force. They just did it last year. So is nine or ten wins out of the question here? I don't think so. But. You know, when you got those three on the road, BYU, Boise, and Alabama, uh, you know, anything more than nine wins it might be a little much. And eight wins seems, you know, right, just about right. Just about right with what with what else is happening across the uh, the conference. You uh, you feel pretty strong about that one? Yep. Eight, eight, eight and four is really, really, really good season. That is basically assuming they have one conference loss. Yes. Yes. So, well, two. Uh, two, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I, I kind of always take Boise out of everything. Yeah. So <laughs> they seem like I, an independent. I <laughs> yeah. I know it sounds shitty because there's no reason this team can't compete with Boise. Agreed. Agreed. I'm 100% with you. I am 100% with you. I think that this team, um, I mean, Utah State could certainly challenge for the division again. Like, I don't, sure. I don't think that there's anything great. Like, they could win the conference again. They got low. The quarterback is back. And they got talented transfers in. So long as everything cooks together. Like, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, we will move on over to the Air Force Falcons. And let me write my time down here. Uh, the Air Force Falcons last year. I mean, just an incredible year. And they do this almost all the time under Troy Calhoun. It feels like it went 10-3. and three. Uh, They were that 149-45 to 45 game away against Utah State from actually winning this division. And being eleven and two, they did win their bowl game against Louisville. Uh, returning production is is actually pretty good here. Um, you look at their roster strength; their the roster strength is never good because they don't get the same recruits as everybody else. But they develop the hell out of kids, just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, big losses for this team: defensive end Jordan Jackson, he got drafted by the Saints. Uh, the linebacker Meeks, the cornerback Milton Bug, the third. But everybody on offense comes back. And this was an incredibly efficient offense last year, number 15 in PPA per drive. Uh, when you look at, you know, at, the offense is just incredibly proven, incredibly experienced. Quarterback uh, Hazik Daniels is back. The playmakers, uh, running back Hughes, the wide receiver Davis. They have got six offensive linemen that had 350-plus snaps last year. Uh, and then their top six rushers are back this season. <laughs> which is just absurd for a team that is awesome at running the football. Um, on top of that, the defense, you know, you got to wonder what that defensive line is going to look like. Uh, the defensive coordinator left. John Radzinski, he left for Virginia. He joined Tony Elliott's staff over there. So the inside linebackers coach, Brian Knorr, is going to take over here. But uh, you look at this, like the defensive line is is my biggest question. They've only got one guy that had more than 277 snaps last year. And and only three players had 250. Like it, they don't have a lot of experience on that defensive line, so that's that's going to be an issue. They lost over 1,400 snaps between the cornerback Bug and the safety Taylor. Um, it, they were number 120 in defensive explosive play rate last year. You got to get your secondary to limit those explosive plays, which is you would think with them running the football, it would limit that anyway. But the play rate. 
is the difference there. Um, keys to the season here, keep Daniels and the playmakers healthy, uh, a little more explosivity in the offense, and then limiting explosive plays on the defense. I mean, the way their schedule sets up, like they could have an undefeated season here. Uh, develop the defensive line, hope that Nora can continue that same trajectory that the defense was on under Radzinski. I've got them going 10-2 and two this year. I mean, they are their their post game win expectancy last year, by the way, was ten point two one and one point seven nine. So it, that's during the regular season. Uh, they were not expected to lose that Utah State game last year. So that's right. I I I look at this team like I've got them losing at San Diego State and I've got them losing to Boise. I could see them beating both of those. There's not a team on this schedule that scares me for Air Force. Like I I really wow. think they're a fantastic team. Yeah, so I've I've got okay. them ten and two, um, but I, I think they could be better than that. We're we're pretty far off here. Okay, we we might not have another one where we're this far off. So I, okay. I've got them six and six. Ooh, okay. okay. I just think this conference is getting better. I think the Mountain West is getting bigger. They're getting stronger and they're getting faster. And the 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 more athleticism that comes into the conference the more that hurts these um, military schools because there's only so big you can get and, and there's only so much strength you can have in the bodies that you have to have to be in the military. That I, I do see where you're going with that. Um, I, I think, I think we're going to see a pretty big drop off there. So I'm curious to see one of us is going to be right. Cause they're not going to have a losing season, right? Like they're going to, they're going to go. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to make so a bowl. Are they, are they closer to ten and two? Or are they closer to six and six? And I, I'm, I'm anxious to see. And you know, I hate that. I don't want to do that. But I think Army is 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 really good. You know. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And, and you know, I'm not I'm not giving them that game. And I think Boise's really good. And I'm not giving them that game. I'm just not. I'm just I, like there's a lot of games where I'm just not going to give it to them anymore. I, can, I think they've got a lot more coin flips than than they do beating the hell out of folks. Their projected SP plus record is eight and four, so it is yeah. right in between where you. So are. right, right between where you and I are. Yeah, you got two it. Games. I got them two games less. You got them two games more. Yeah, That's, I may be overestimating the the or I guess underestimating the loss of Radzinski, the defensive coordinator. That could be a big thing here. Um, I just I trust just Calhoun. Be, just not giving him enough of credit. Because I look at the schedule, and I but I like this conference. I think this yeah. conference is getting deeper. There was a day and a time where this conference was a one trick pony for decades, not not a couple of years. For twenty years, they had one horse, and yeah. now they got five or six horses, and they, and they change spots all the time. No, you're Santa definitely State right. Like won it. this monkey a couple of years ago, and then struggled to get to five hundred. Because yeah. all and it wasn't because they fell off. Because all the other teams got back. Nobody on the planet thought Utah State was going to be anywhere close to as good as they were last year. Is it impossible for another Utah State to show up? No, for I don't think so. To go from worst to first. I, I mean, I will. I will tell you this. I don't know that Wyoming, Colorado State, and New Mexico no, are going to do that. But we don't. We don't think it's going to happen. But also, we know. I would take like you tell me more than anybody else. Colorado State is putting money in the resources. Oh, yeah. They're it's, trying to get better. At some point in time, it's probably going to click, and it might only click for a season. But I just click. feel like I just feel like it, this conference is getting to a point where you can't just wash over wins. Now, the next team, I'm, all that's going to sound ridiculous because <laughs> – they're, they're the big boy team, and I just watched over wins. So, well, let's uh, let's go on and dive into them, the Boise State Broncos, and of course, first year under Andy Avalos, uh, they, uh, you know, seven and five. Their post game win expectancy uh, had them at six point five seven and five point four three. So, you know, six and six, seven and five. They ended up seven and five. Uh, their projected SP plus record for this year is nine and three. You look at the numbers from last year, and they were incredibly efficient. Number 49 in PPA margin, uh, net points per drive, they were number 36. Like, they demolished some teams, uh, went 0-3 in one-score games. The offense has got to be more explosive with the quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer. Um, 
they lose their big play wide receiver, who was the only explosive threat they had. That was a uh, Khalil Shakir. Um, they lose, you know, defensive back uh, Kaneho, the linebacker Riley Wimpy. Um, I mean, they lose offensive linemen. Jack Sears transferred out. The running back, our backup running back Andrew Van Buren, uh, transferred out. Like they still got dudes. Um, they're number seven in the country in defensive returning production. They're number twenty three in overall returning production. Uh, strongest roster in the Mountain West this year, for sure. Uh, along with that, uh, you've got just efficiency on offense being the name of the game. Explosiveness was not. They lose the most explosive guy. Like I said, can they fix that issue? Can they bring in somebody or develop somebody into being that playmaker? I don't know that for sure yet. The offensive line is going to be good. Um, they return over four players, or excuse me, they return four players with more than 400 snaps. But their rushing success rate last year was number 91, which is something we're not used to. They've got George Halani coming back, the running back. But they I mean, they just were not able to really run the ball consistently last year. Uh, that's something that they're going to have to fix. They got to fix that on offense to be able to win some of these games. Uh, along with that, on the defensive side, uh, studs all over the defense. They, they need to limit the explosive plays a little more. They were number 66 in defensive play rate, uh, defensive explosive play rate allowed. Um, you know, it, it bit Boise in a big way. They were number 64 in the country in 20-plus yard plays given up. Uh, rather than just being efficient, I'm curious if Boise can get into the backfield. They were number 90 in the country in tackles for loss last year, number 64 in sacks. So you gotta you got to be a little more aggressive. Avalos usually is. I don't know why this team didn't exactly jump into that last year. Still incredibly efficient team. They were number 17 in turnover margin, number 22 in penalties per game. They were better than that 7-5 and five record. It felt like, at least the roster looked like it. Um, you know, the keys for the season for me, defense needs to get more pressure and force more tackles for loss. Uh, the offense needs to be more explosive, and they need to win more close games. I mean, going 0-3 in those one-score games last year, it, including the first game of the season, when they were up 21 to nothing on UCF and ended up losing the game. I mean, just absurd. Nothing went right in Avalos' first year last year. I And then, of course, you know, the team got COVID. They couldn't even play in the, uh, in the bowl game. So I'm sure that he is looking to get a fresh start this go-round. I have got faith in this program overall. Uh, I don't know so much about Avalos, but because he is at that program... I feel good about them. I've got them going 10-2. and two. Only losses on the schedule I've got are to Fresno State and BYU. But even those could be wins. Uh, so I, I like them at 10-2. and two. I think there's a big difference between the haves and the have-nots in, in this division this year. So I do too. And we're exactly the same here. I was curious where you might have them. I've got them 10-2 and two as well. Uh, I think we're going to see a big bounce back uh, for uh, Avalos and this team. I could uh, I could certainly see it. Um, you look at what they've got now. I mean, don't get me wrong; they could they could go out and lose the first game of the season. They do play at right. Oregon State. No, anything could happen. But anything, anything could happen. happen. Yeah, uh, their schedule. There are. It's not like they. I mean, seven and five is not out of the realm of possibility again, because you've got right. Oregon State, you've got San Diego State, Fresno at Air Force, uh, BYU, and then Utah State to end the year. Like there are a lot of landmines here. But this is the best roster in the Mountain West, and I expect Avalos to bounce back in his second full season and and really be able to turn this thing up. So I, I've got him at ten and two, uh, and you've got him at ten and two as well. We got three more, so let's go ahead and run through them. Uh, I won't say quickly, but but quickly, uh, we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Let's move on to the Wyoming Cowboys and Craig Bowl. Went seven and six last year. Now I had high hopes for this bunch last year, and they just did not uh, do what they were supposed to do at all. Uh, and on top of that, this year, look, returning production, they're number 129 in the country. There are 131 FBS teams this year. Now that we have added James Madison, there's going to be even more next year, but 129 is, you know, next to last. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They lose pretty much everybody. Their roster strength is way, way, way down. Uh, even worse than usual for their recruiting standards. Um, they lost a bunch of dudes. They just lost Solomon Bird in the uh, transfer portal. Uh, they lost both of their quarterbacks, Sean Chambers and Levi Williams, left. 
Uh, the running back, Valade, uh, went to Arizona State. Uh, the wide receiver, Isaiah Naor, um, he left to go to Texas. I mean, they, they lost a bunch of DBs. Uh, just not great things here. Um, they did bring in quarterback Andrew Peasley from Utah State, the backup guy. And, uh, and he might be pretty good. So we'll see there. On offense, it's a whole new cast, but they're going to have to put up more points than they did last year because the defense is just not going to be as good. They lost too many guys. Um, the offense was not great last year. So, you know, and you know that I love teams like this, uh, especially Craig Bowl, what he does. He likes to run the football, et cetera. Um, you know, they, they got Titus Swin, the running back, uh, back this year, and he was the backup last year, but his numbers were uh, relatively close to Valadez. So uh, secondary lost six of their top seven. They did get transfers from Ole Miss and Wisconsin. They're still not as likely to be as good as uh, as they were last year. The defensive line and linebacking core looked pretty stacked, but you can only do so much to prop up the secondary, especially in this conference. Uh, brother, like, I, I've got this team 4-8, and eight, and I don't like that because I, I like what Craig Bold does, but, man, when you get hit with the transfer portal and all of those seniors that graduated, um, I just... I mean, you're, you're going to have to try and develop guys early. They play Illinois, Tulsa, uh, Air Force at BYU in the first, like, four of the first five games. I just, I don't think it's going to be good this year. Uh, so, I'm, I'm at four and eight. What are you looking at? Four and eight. Wow, we have one that we're, like, wildly apart. Wildly apart. But almost all the rest of them, we have been as close as you could possibly be. Uh, we, I mean, we've been the exact same on... So oh, several of these so far. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Um, I just – I got them four and eight. When I, I, when I look I, at this, I, I, I think – There's not a lot of hope here. La- no, last year you tried to snooker me in on, on them being good, and I just didn't see it. I kind of stayed where I was at. Yeah, yeah. You you were smarter than me on that. Uh, <laughs> I just – I really thought, like, they had everything in place last year. And, and you look at the roster, and it certainly looked like they did. But – uh. Ooh, and the schedule was set up like brilliantly for them, and they just looked awful at certain points. It was why well, you ridiculous. can't look at a schedule, my friend. Oh, so ridiculous, just so ridiculous. But either way, either way, so we both have them around four and eight. Let's move on to our next team here, and that would be my friend, a team with a brand new head football coach. That would be the Colorado State Rams. Now, Colorado State, Jay Norvell uh, leading this team now. He was Nevada's coach last year. Steve Adazio was the man on the way out, of course. Uh, this is going to be a completely different team than what we saw from the Rams last year. Uh, they do lose their quarterback, uh, big quarterback, uh, Rashad Ajay. Uh, the tight end, Trey McBride, who ended up going, I think, in the second round of the NFL draft. They lose uh, a defensive end, Patchen, defensive tackle, Manny Jones, cornerback, Cameron, um, a, a whole lot. But they bring in a ton, just an absolute ton. Uh, they brought in 11 offensive transfers, seven defensive transfers, and two special teamers. Like, this might be a quicker turnaround than I was initially thinking. They went 3-9 and nine last year. Their postgame win expectancy said they should have been 6-6. Six and six. Like, it, they, they lost some games that they absolutely had no business losing last year. <laughs> but it was a completely different philosophy, um, which is why bringing in transfers was important in this situation. They are number 108 in returning production, and I don't know that that necessarily matters in this situation. Um, the offensive coordinator, Matt Mummy, everybody knows how Mummy, uh, he and Mike Leach kind of put together this whole air raid thing that everybody's doing now. And Jay Norvell swears by it. He did it at Nevada. He's going to continue to do it. Uh, under Adazio, Colorado State ran the ball 56.6% of the time, and 63% of their passes went to tight ends or running backs. Norvell's offense at Nevada, they threw the ball 63% of the time, and 66% of those went to wide receivers. This is a massive offensive uh, philosophical difference here. Um, the offensive line is almost entirely transfers. Brought in a bunch of guys you know, from Nevada that followed over Jay Norvell. Uh, they should be able to pick up a new philosophy pretty quick, I would hope. I would think. Uh, as far as the defense goes, like they've got some incredibly talented pieces on the defensive line and in the linebacker. The front seven, uh, pretty good. Devin Phillips, uh, Daquan John, or Jackson, excuse me. Um, but keeping them healthy is vital because there is 
zero depth on this team as far as like talented dudes. Uh, the secondary is being rebuilt. They're going to have to find a way to limit explosive plays. They were number 107 in that metric last year. Um, man, when I look at that, like 11 Nevada football players followed Norvell over to Colorado State. Uh, that's a that's a relatively new thing. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm curious what that's going to mean. Uh, I don't have any real idea what to expect from either side of the ball here. But, uh, you know... It, I'm I'm interested in the defense being able to provide the same stability that they did last year that actually kept Colorado State in games because they were number 27 in the country in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, the offense was just the biggest issue for them last year. Uh, I've got this team at 5-7, and seven, Chris. Like I, I think they're going to be a little bit better than they were last year. I, I just don't know that they are quite there yet. Like first year rebuilds are always really really tough, even when you're bringing in transfers. Uh, but five and seven would be an improvement over three and nine from last year. So how do you feel five about them? I, God, man, we're we're cheating off one another. I've got five and seven as well. I think this team has a chance to be fun, exciting. Um, I don't know how good the offense will be, but they'll be more fun to watch than they have been. That's yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Like the offense, you know. If you liked throwing the ball to the tight end and running the ball directly in between the guard and the center, um, you know, yeah, that was Steve Adazio's thing. And it, the problem is they weren't very good at it. They were number 114 in rushing success rate last year. <laughs> like, it's just just absurd uh, thinking about it. But they, like, that team could have been really good or, or at least more competitive than they were. And towards the end of the season, I mean, that team had just quit which is why Adazio got fired after his second season. Like, they were really competitive early and then just, I mean, got whipped at the end of the season. Just it was just unbelievable. So, yeah, it was time for a change, and Jay Norvell uh, knew that there was not enough support at Nevada, and at Colorado State, he is going to get it. You don't normally see, you know, teams in the same conference, especially G5 conferences, uh, steal coaches from one another, but that's the level that they're at, right? Colorado State is just a level above Nevada uh, as far as, you know, alumni support, booster support, et cetera. Like, it, Colorado State wants to be one of the big boys. So, right. there you go. All right, last one on the docket here, and there may not be a whole lot to talk about with this bunch, but the New Mexico Lobos are next on the clock here. Danny Gonzalez, the coach, uh, they went three and nine last year. They uh, they are now five and fourteen, or he is five and fourteen in two seasons as head coach. Um, I, you know, they got big losses on defense. They lost quarterback Terry Wilson, but they do bring in uh, the quarterback Miles Kendrick. Uh, they were partially really bad on offense last year, which, by the way, number one hundred and thirty, dead last in offensive PPA per drive number 130 in rushing success rate, number 130 in passing success rate. They were number 99 in offensive explosive play rate. So not dead last, but, you know, still not great. Uh, it was partially because they they started four different quarterbacks throughout the season due to injuries and, and whatnot, uh, including they, they had to start a graduate manager in the last game of the year. So, you know, eh, not, not great here. Uh, the offensive line only returns two guys with more than 90 snaps played. But you and I have talked about this. Like, is that such a bad thing? If they were already that bad, is it is it awful to just bring in a whole new crop of them? I don't like, think so. I don't think I, so. I either. think this is what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, this is, they they were they were so bad. Uh, Kansas transfer quarterback, Miles Kendrick, looks like he's going to be the starting quarterback. I don't know if that's an improvement. I, we'll see. It, it's got to be an improvement over starting four different guys. But still, on defense, uh, everybody was very excited about bringing in Rocky Long as the defensive coordinator a couple of years ago when he uh, willingly left his post as the San Diego State head coach. Uh, but this just kind of goes to show you that there are some places, there are some schools, some programs that it, it you could hire the best coach in the world and there is still a ceiling on what they can accomplish. Um the secondary is loaded with returning snaps and whatnot. Their their pass defense was their best spot. They were number forty two in defensive passing success rate allowed. Um, I mean the defensive line, uh, 
they got to improve the rushing success rate from number 79. Like, it, that, that's going to be their big thing. The biggest thing, their offense has got to do something. Like, Jesus, that, that team is so bad. Um, the keys to the season here, hope Miles Kendrick immediately forms a connection with wide receiver uh, Jordan Porter, uh, the guy from Arizona State. He averaged 17.9 yards per catch on only 14 catches at Arizona State. So you hope there's some kind of connection there because those guys are both talented. Uh, if the defense can be more aggressive and improve from the number 123 havoc rate, that could provide a little bit of stability that the offense can use to kind of catch up. And on top of that, um, if there is a, a regression this year, I don't know that Gonzalez gets to a year four. I mean, it might help that Rocky Long is there, but, like, you gotta you got to show some improvement, right? I, like, New Mexico may just keep him around for a long time. But even, uh, uh, God, what was the guy before him? Bob Davies? Like, he at least had something going. Like, I, I have no, I'm, I've got him at 2-10. and 10, um, But I, you know, they could go 0-12, and, and I, it wouldn't shock me. Or they might, they could go 3-9 and nine again, it wouldn't shock me. Anywhere between 0 and 3 wins is about where I've got them. If they, go, if they got 4 wins, I would be stunned. Stunned. How do you feel about it? Well, we're finally a little different. Okay. I got him. I got him. I got him one and eleven. <laughs> We're off by one one ball game there. <laughs> this this is a bad football team, man. This is a team that I think would benefit uh, from dropping down to FCS. But here's the problem. I, look, I watched a lot of FCS football. You know, during that weird ass COVID <laughs> year, where we got to see them in the spring. Man, almost every one of those damn teams are a lot better than this team. Not a little better. A lot better yeah. than this team. You're not wrong. Not a little, a lot. Uh, it's it's so bad because I would love for I mean, a team named the Lobos to be pretty good, right? Listen, this team and UMass and UConn could all put they could put together an all star team of the best players on their rosters, and they'd still suck. It's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Like I, I I look at this team and I'm like, you know. Like the safety, Jarek Reed, like could be fun. Like the the right okay. guard, Isaac Gutierrez, could be fun. Like I, I just don't see a lot of. They're I'm gonna just need not to, good. Yeah, I'm gonna need. They're to just see not it. good. They're not good talent wise. I don't think they're good coaching wise. They're they're just not. This team it only exists to take checks and to cash checks. That's what they do. That's mind blowing. They should fill their entire. They should go independent and fill the all twelve games would just pay for wins. Just yeah. line them up. It's so frustrating. Co- come out of the season making twenty four million dollars. You'll make more than every Pac twelve team out there. I get down with that. That's they have not a bigger bad. athletic department than the Pac twelve football. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, I could get with that. I could get with that. Uh, I am looking at. It looks like I've got Boise State winning the division. So I do too, but I, I would, I would, I would love, love to see our boy Mike Anderson have another, have Blake another Anderson, one, right? <laughs> Blake Anderson. I'm sorry, no, Blake Anderson have another one. Yeah, I would, uh, I would like that as well. Um, but yeah. Boise is the better football team. Boise is a better program. I gotta see. I gotta see. Uh, Utah State do it again. I'll tell you this though, I think it's a two horse race. Now you, now you, you ask me, you ask me what I follow the division. Yeah, I think it's a two horse race because because I think it's it. I, I I just don't believe in Air Force the way you do, and uh, so I think it's going to be one of those two. All right, I can get down with that. I can get down with that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.